Thank H.D. You. Boyd is our guest, as in uh, County Commissioner H.D. Boyd. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Hey, you've had the uh, pleasure of serving on the city council and now the county commission. So give me the perspective of a guy who's been with both because uh, the relationship between the two hasn't always been that great. Uh, no, it hasn't. Um, it, I will say it's gotten a lot better. Um, we, we are starting to work on projects together and communicate better. Um, you know, I was new to everything when I got on city council, and uh, it was a learning process. Um, I, I will say that uh, I thought there was, uh, I, I don't know how to put it. It, it, it was a more of an uphill battle to get things done in the city when I was there. Um, you know, you, you couldn't just say, hey, I'd like to discuss getting this on the agenda or whatnot and get it on the agenda, um, not to throw anybody on the bus or anything like that. But it, it was a whole different a whole different vibe, a whole different feel than what the county is. You mm -hmm. know, um, I got elected onto the county commission or council will be commissioned as of July 1st. Um, and it, it was more open. It was everyone's a participant we work together to to make a better county you know um that wasn't the the open vibe when you come into the city you know it was you served when george was mayor i did and you your first <clears> term <throat> as a county councilman was was uh, doug uh, still council president count president when you were yes. on the commission the first yeah. time well right. i don't know if he was president i know he's on the, on the council I, he yeah, probably he was, president. was the president but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. all right very good hey and by the way while we were plugging businesses i could ask you to plug yours too well, I have a few. I have uh, Mama Boyd's Family Diner, which is doing really well now. It's you know it took us a little while to get get it all together, but it, it's come together well. And uh, got a new business that's going to be opening soon, uh, Tilty McFlippers. It's a uh, retro arcade and pinball bar with uh, axe throwing and uh, pool tables and several other things. We'll have ski ball and, and, and different games for kids. Um, you know, family-friendly place. Uh, you know, I, I think it'll be pretty good. Will there be any alcohol mixed in with the axe throwing? Uh, there will be some alcohol there, but I don't know if we'll mix it in with the <laughs> axe throwing. You know, well, that was just a, <laughs> that was a smart-ass question. And where where is this going to be located? It is on 80, 805, I believe, East Molar Avenue, mm -hmm. which is um, where the Eastern Panhandle Eastern Panhandle Bicycle Shop is located. Mm -hmm. We are. Um, Moving into the building with them, so they're still on the small side of the building, and we'll be on the larger side of the building, more like the warehouse space. I think we're 5,000 square feet on our side. Now, I understand the job where the person puts the apple on their head for the target for the axe throws pays very well, but the medical insurance is very high. That'd be pretty... You don't want to pay that worker's cop bill. <laughs> I don't want to pay that one. And they seem to keep an ad running for that position all, all the, the time. Always looking you for new. Stay behind the line. You must stay behind the line. Always looking for new talent on that one there. Uh, HD, let's uh, let's talk about the uh, the county and uh, a one percent sales tax. Okay, because every county commissioner I've interviewed has advocated for that one percent sales tax. What about you? Well, you know, when I first came on the show, when I was running for this position, that, that was one of the things I brought up that in a, in a possible or a possible um, consumption tax. Um, I think the 1% sales tax is a good thing. It, it's something that we need here in Berkeley County. It may not be the same across the state, and I think that's why it was frowned upon some. I, I did get to talk to the governor about it a little bit a month or two ago. Um, and, and I did explain to him that, you know, we're in a different circumstance than other counties. And, I, you know, I don't know how much he already knew of that or didn't know of that. But, you know, we, we fight an uphill battle here to, to pay our services to get the, the money we need for firefighters and police. You know, right now we still have a, a bulk of our firefighters are volunteers. And uh, in this day and age, it's hard to find employees, let alone volunteers, you know. And uh, these late night fire calls and different things uh, have really put a hurt on us. And, and we need to find a way to get the money to pay these guys. So I think that's a great way to do it. I don't think it, it hurts the community as much because you're, you're able to get the pass-through money that comes down 81 every day. There's a lot of sales tax money that comes down this, this corridor, you know. And even if you made it so many miles, just the, so many miles stripped down the highway, of this is where the 1% sales tax would be added on in the county. Um, but, but something needs to be done there. Or we need to find a way to, uh, 
to generate some more revenue for sure. We happen to have a state senator in the room here who's also on the finance committee. Jason, ge generally speaking, do, are you supportive of a 1% county sales tax? And what's your thought about the vibe in the uh, legislature about it? Well, it, it's a tough lift in the legislature for sure. And, and I think HD pointed out that there are differences between Berkeley, Jefferson County, and what we see uh, across the rest of the state, where the 1% would be incredibly beneficial uh, to our counties here uh, because of you know the I-81 corridor, because of Jefferson County's uh, tourism industry. A lot of folks from out of state are going to be paying this 1%. I think what legislators would, would like to see, uh, and this is just my opinion of, of what I think other people believe is that they would want this to be a county option uh, I think that they would want uh, some requirement of the county um, to put uh, maybe a freeze on fees uh, maybe uh, I think locally uh, if I were on the county council um, and I was advocating for a one percent uh, sales tax I think I would say this is this is the this is how we're going to eliminate the rain tax but I think there there has to be some some things that offset and I think that when you look at doing that again from my perspective I would look at ways that we can save residents of Berkeley County money by, by lowering some of their taxes and then putting in the one percent sales tax which would generate more money than you're than you're you're cutting uh, so that it's not revenue neutral because if it's revenue neutral it's worthless uh, but at the same time so you would need something that the one percent sales tax which would generate more money uh, but again it's a, it's largely from folks out of state and i think that just makes a, a tremendous amount of sense for the county there are other ways uh, to fund firefighters um, there's the county has the ability uh, to go in and raise the fire fee uh, through a ballot initiative and so i think that that i would ask county residents would you rather have an increase in your fire fee that only berkeley county residents and businesses pay or would you rather have a one percent sales tax where we collect so much money uh, from folks out of state and they can help uh, pay our firefighters and not uh, increase fire fees so uh, I, I think that's the way in which you sell it but but to answer your question um, i would be supportive of of giving the counties the option for local control to, to run their county government the best way they see fit. But there also has to be, um, uh, you know, something uh, in, in, to get the bill passed. There has to be something that, that requires the county uh, to offset um, with some, some other kind of tax decrease uh, to residents or some kind of fee decrease. HD, what do you think about that? I don't disagree with him uh, on the fire fee thing. They have come to us, the fire commission has come to us to get that on the ballot um, for this next uh, election. But one thing we see of it, and, and you know, we are the ones appointed people on that commission, but in the past and even now, they won't commit any money. So they they want to up the fees right now, but don't want to commit any of that money to paid firefighters. They want to use it for structures and fire trucks and things like that. And that, and that's where us as a as a commission uh, council have a, have a real issue because we have no control on what they do with that money. So if they put that on the ballot and, and it passes on the ballot, it doesn't mean the firefighters are getting paid unless we have everyone on that board and unanimous to say they'll use that money to pay firefighters. At this point, we have no commitment from them to pay any firefighters. I, I believe it was last year, the year before, um, we we offered to match the money for Hedgesville's volunteer fire department to fully staff them and they wouldn't come to the table with the other half of the money. What what is the fire fee now? Um, how much is it? Yeah, how much is it? Uh, off the top of my head, I don't Just know. Just anybody know roughly? I mean, it's... Somebody, uh, somebody posted in our Facebook chat section. We'll get an answer that way. That'd be yeah. great. I mean, because I, I, I live in the city, so I don't pay the <laughs> county fire fee. Yeah, I'm the same. But, I mean, looking at it, I mean, if you've got to raise the fire fee a couple hundred dollars a household, I mean, we've got a lot of houses in this county. It wouldn't be hard to you know, maybe not fully staff these stations um, as they do in, you if know, If you did a couple hundred cities. household, I think you, there's a lot of households. I think you more it's than under, staff the I think it's under $100. I live in the city too, but I, I think it's like the $50 range, I believe. I mean, if you made it okay. a couple hundred dollars, it really, it would, really wouldn't be that noticeable to people. And I mean, I know personally, one of the reasons I like living in the city is the services. I know we have professional firefighters, we have police, uh, we don't, we, we have garbage, we're not having to, you know, contract with one of the garbage companies. I mean, I like services. And I mean, volunteer firefighters have been around forever, and they do a phenomenal job, but it's harder and harder to find people, like you say, harder to find people to, to work for actual money. 
even uh, I mean, it'd be it'd be nice to if it could be raised enough where maybe it's not fully staffed, where every station has a few professionals we, we at have, all times. We have like three at each station, and there's uh, one station fully staffed, and I think we're up in one more. But the county's big. You know, we have a large area to cover, a lot more than the city, you know. And and if you put that in perspective, the, the money – that we get back from some of the, um, the the fire fees. I don't know if it's just the fire fees. See, it breaks down like we're basically getting five dollars a household, where other counties are getting fifty dollars a household to their fire departments, um, because it's it's based on um, <clears throat> it, it, it's based on the um, the scenario of of municipalities to to counties and and how many firehouses you have like if we broke down and made a municipality in spring mills and a municipality in inwood and a municipality in hedgesville we'd get more money for our fire departments but since all our departments are under our one county and we have to cover all that area we don't get as much per per household well, and know? that's that's from the insurance premium tax uh, yeah. so that when you have homeowners insurance there's a there's a tax on that that, that goes to the state Thank you. the state then takes that money and distributes it distributes it back out uh to counties and to hd's point if if a small rural county well, let me let me back up if a large geographic uh, uh rural county may have 10 or 12 fire stations each fire station receives the same amount of money so in berkeley county and that's that's statewide so you know we're our uh fire departments certainly have the call volume that that's much higher than the rest of the state but in these little rural counties you know because it's so far and because the topography and the roads you know they have fire stations that may only take a handful of calls a year they're receiving the same amount of money so there is there is a push in the legislature uh, and it, it failed at the the last night of session uh, to increase that, either increase that insurance premium tax or come up with some other source of funding to these fire departments. And I think that uh, what's in the best interest of Eastern Panhandle counties uh, is to, if we're going to increase that insurance premium tax, uh, is to, to take part of that uh, percentage and, and give every fire station equal money. And then take the rest of it and distribute it then to a per capita basis directly to the county to allow them to use part of that money for paid staff if they choose. Uh, but would have to be used for fire and EMS, but would give them the opportunity to pay staff at the same time. Mm. Well, it's, By I the mean, way, Bill Stubblefield texted me and said $50. Look at that. So I mean, that fee. And if you, look you, at, if you look at the per capita income in Berkeley County versus the middle of the state, I mean, we could raise it to two hundred and fifty, three hundred dollars a household, and it really wouldn't. The fire fee really wouldn't be noticed. Um, I mean, some areas of the state, fifty dollars is a lot of money. Here, fifty dollars is really nothing for most households. I, I, I'd like to see professional firefighters all over the place. I mean, I think I think public safety is one of is probably the most important thing that government does is keep us safe on the fire police side. Um, what uh, I mean, would you be in favor? I mean, you know, a lot of the, the people on the, the commission council. What, are we now? When July we, 1st. July 1st. OK. Um, and we're still probably all going to mess that up for the next three or four years. And who knows if it'll get changed again down the road. I'm, I've already moved into commission mode, baby. Commission there mode. Go. There yeah. you go. Um, what are other things that the county needs funding wise? What are other things that we think? Do you think we have a shortfall and that we can control? Obviously, we can't control the road problems and a lot of the infrastructure because that comes through the state. But what are things that we could be doing better here in the county with our county taxpayers' dollars? I mean, a, a big push that, that I would like to see is a, um, an indoor sports and aquatic center. Um, that's something that we lack here. Uh, we are working hard with parks and rec and, and getting more parks and trails. We're working on the um, park that um, – that, Doug and those guys started up there and um, um, Sportsman's Paradise to have a riverfront uh, park. Um, we've acquired a lot of land up there. Uh, that's coming along well. There's some designs, um, but it's it's still in the process. Um, the park in Inwood, that's that's getting started and getting ready to move along. Um, you know, there there's a lot of trails something that didn't pass last year at legislation that, that has really been pushed is is the the 
the rails with trails, not the rails to trails. So, so the rails to trails is what they did with Frog Hollow. The rails to trails is where you actually put trails along a current slow paced railroad. Not only would that open up a, a lot more of, of trails and movement throughout the, the county, <clears throat> it would open opportunities for other things like um, able to get high speed internet uh, uh, throughout the county, the, the fiber optics quickly, um, because along those trails, if you're putting in a trail while you're putting in a trail, you could put the fiber optics along that trail um, within the railroad system there so you can sort um, of kill two birds with one stone not that we're advocating killing birds by any stretch but correct but you know that would that would get you your your fiber optics from end to end of the county quickly um it would allow for more trails um that would connect the whole county you know you have the the railroad system there i don't know which railroad it's owned by but it goes through the center of martinsburg it goes there by the the interwoven and and whatnot that that runs the length of the county it's, it's a slow trail um i believe it goes one out by lows and, and on but you know if you could put trails along that you you pretty much open the whole county along there and connect parks all all the way along um that's some of what, what we're looking at um another idea we you know it's a city park but parks and rec in a city in the county we all work together and hopefully here soon we'll be doing a lot more together but you know i think at lambert park the pool is outdated it's 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 a it's a money pit right now mm -hmm. I, I think you know there's been some discussion that we turn it into a splash pad you know, maybe leave the water slide and turn it into a splash pad park, which is something new. They're popping up everywhere in, in the cities and, and different places. You know, you go to Orlando, some different places, and you have all these, you know, splash features. The little kids come. They have a great time, you know. Um, it's relatively easy to put together. Um, and it, and it, it's not a money pit like the big pool. And, and we could look at putting another pool in another place or the indoor aquatic park or indoor aquatic center. Do we know, I mean, has the county done a study? Do we know what it would cost to, you know, complete, keep Lambert a pool? Because, I mean, I personally believe we need two pools in the county. To what, what it would cost to, you know, basically, like, take it down and put it back up. I mean, what, what would that cost? And, and with all the money that seems to be put in every year and all the inconvenience. Well, I, mean, I mean, Parks and Rec has more money than they've ever had right now. Our hotel motel taxes is, is going through the roof, you know, so they have some money over there. Um, I don't – they have some things going on over there. I'm, I'm not going to speak when I don't know a whole lot about it, but, the, you know, there's there's some work that needs to be done over there. And, um, you know – Are you talking about with personnel or are you talking about all projects? Toge all together. All together, I believe, personally. Yeah. Um, Who's the council Parks and Rec – liaison is that uhd or is it someone no else? it's is it not steve me. um no it's not steve either i don't believe i eddie? think eddie is eddie, right. yeah. okay mm -hmm. yeah, we had a discussion with bob williams last week about the fact that they don't have a summer basketball league they just they had it everything was set and then they just said hey we're canceling it and we asked him last week why i asked him why did you cancel it and he's like oh it was just a decision we made it's like the inner city kids those are the kids that need stuff like that that needs things and need things in the summer he was talking about other things i was like that's great other things are going on but the city residents and, and the people out in the county, I mean, the, the kids count on stuff like that. I don't know if you could look into that for us also. We, we asked the county, the city councilman we had on last week to look into it. Yeah, it's, it's on, Corey Roman, by the way. It's, it's kind Roman, of yes. on my agenda of things to get done. Um, I have been a little busy, but yes, I, I'm, I'm a bit concerned with what's going on at Parks and Rec, and, and I do want to uh, try to. See, I, I mean, their meeting is a difficult time in the day. It's it's, it's a lunchtime meeting. It uh, doesn't allow for much of the public to be there to, to participate and talk. Um, you know, there's a couple boards that are like that. Um, but, I mean, I, I, particularly I believe some of these meetings should be in the evening where, where some of the public can attend and, and give their say on what's going on. Um, meeting at 1 o'clock in the afternoon doesn't do much for the people that work, you know. Do you think that's by design? Well, it could have been a long time ago, and they just haven't changed it. Maybe they should look into changing it. You know, that's that's my take on it. Uh, HD, there was a complaint in our comment section about uh, you missing some council meetings or commission meetings i know you said I you're missed one last week one last week mm -hmm. uh, i know you're a busy person do you have trouble making the meetings i haven't looked up your attendance record I, but is absolutely it absolutely not i've missed i think a total of three since i've been there they're every thursday mm -hmm. um i have um i do watch online when i'm not there i've asked for zoom to be set up when i can't be there uh i do I am in and out of town, but I, I'm fully participating in what's going on. I don't know um, who said I've not been there a lot. I, I think there's a, a couple other people who missed the same amount I've missed since I've been there. So 
uh, three meetings since November. I don't think it's too bad or December. Uh, HD, when four a month. We've got about a minute. Did you have a final question, Jason? Well, I want to just in that same about? subject. You mentioned Zoom. Does the county council? Do you guys allow uh, to to vote or to be participate remotely, either through phone or through? through I've been Zoom? working on that, and I was told that when Dan was there, that he did do f call ins, because as we get into the summer, yeah, there there's probably going to be another meeting or two that I miss this summer, I, and and I would like to participate because I can participate from where I'm at, you know, um, and and so I'm going to work on that this week. Um, I'm going to talk to, you know, Gary, the incoming, um, um, Gary Warren. Yeah. The incoming administrator and, um, and, and Alan as well, and, and see what we could work that out there. Um, because my parents don't live here, they're getting older and I do spend time with them in the summer. You know, I go down to North Carolina, you know, you don't get another set of parents and okay. I'm going to spend time with them, you know, and it doesn't deter me or stop me from getting business done. I own 10 plus businesses now. They all still operate without me being there on a daily basis. So I'm able to handle this job just fine. I was just wondering if it was permitted or not. Um, like I said, I, I believe it is. Um, you know, th this last week I wasn't there. Uh, I was in North Carolina with my parents and um, they, they had a light agenda. There was two of us that weren't there last week. It wasn't just myself, I believe. And so, yeah. Uh, final word is yours, HD. Anything else you want to communicate to our listening and viewing I mean, audience? I'm just out here working hard with the other guys at the county, um, putting in time and, and trying to, to better our county. Um, there there's is some other things I'm working on behind the scenes that I'm not going to talk about yet, um, but I'm working, waiting on some contracts and some things that could be really big. So Good to see you again. Thanks so much for coming you. in. Mm -hmm. H.D. Boyd from the County Commission.